Peter, who had grown accustomed to dealing with predators in his conservation area, was taken aback when he received a report about a black bear seen wandering in close proximity to his patrol zone. With a heightened sense of vigilance, he made his way through the area, his eyes scanning the terrain for any sign of the creature. It wasn't long before he detected some rustling movement in the distance and cautiously moved towards it. As he drew nearer, an astonishing and chilling sight unfolded before him. The black bear was carrying a small child in its mouth. This unprecedented scene sent shivers down Peter's spine, as nothing in his extensive career had ever prepared him for such a moment. Faced with a heart-stopping dilemma, Peter knew he had to act wisely. Any sudden or aggressive move could provoke the bear and put the child's life in greater jeopardy. Stealthily, he followed the bear, keeping a safe distance. Moments later, the bear set the child down gently on the ground. Peter saw this as a potential opportunity to rescue the child. He began to assess his intervention strategy. But just as he was about to act, the bear turned and locked eyes with him. Initially, Peter thought he had remained undetected. But the bear's demeanor swiftly changed, signaling danger, drawing on his ranger training. Peter knew better than to flee or make sudden movements. So he froze, hoping to de-escalate the situation. However, to Peter's dismay, the bear quickly picked up the child again and darted off into the dense forest. Peter attempted to follow but soon lost track of them. Realizing the gravity of the situation, he called for backup though his fellow rangers were skeptical of his dramatic report. Undeterred and driven by a deep concern for the child's safety, Peter urgently contacted the local police. The police took his report seriously and responded swiftly to the scene. Upon their arrival, Peter briefed his superior and the responding officers in his office before they ventured into the woods to search for the bear and the child. More officers arrived at the scene, and they instructed Peter to stay back their demeanor showing slight irritation, the reason for which Peter couldn't ascertain. When the officers returned from the forest, they began to question Peter intensively about his account of the events. Despite the initial serious response from the police, their attitude began to shift, casting doubt on the credibility of Peter's story. This sudden change perplexed Peter, but he remained adamant about what he had witnessed. The police, now skeptical, hinted they believed he might be fabricating the story. They informed him of their impending departure, which escalated Peter's distress to the point of tears. His day then took an even worse turn when his boss demanded a meeting and subsequently suspended him. Revoking his ranger duties, Peter felt increasingly isolated and misunderstood, grappling with the disbelief of those around him and his own shaken reality. Many in the community had dismissed his accounts of seeing a bear accompanied by a child in the dense forest as mere hallucinations, a byproduct of his grief and loss. Yet, Peter was undeterred in his conviction and driven by a deep-seated need to ensure no other child would suffer a fate similar to his own. Peter's insistence on entering the forest was met with resistance from his wife, who, deeply concerned for his well-being, pleaded with him to abandon his search. Despite her fears, Peter, motivated by a paternal instinct and a sense of duty, set out at dawn to evade the guards routinely stationed around the forest's outskirts. Needing more than just moral support, Peter turned to his best friend and fellow ranger, Jacob, for help. Jacob, taken aback by Peter's unexpected visit and the intensity of his plea, was initially reluctant to join the precarious mission. However, Seeing the desperation in Peter's eyes and understanding the gravity of his friend's emotional state, Jacob could not stand aside. He agreed to assist Peter. Driven by a mix of concern for his friend's safety and a professional curiosity stirred by Peter's unusual claims. As they ventured deeper into the wilderness, Peter's continuous mentions of the child and the bear raised doubts in Jacob's mind about Peter's mental state. Yet, at the location where Peter claimed to have spotted them, Jacob's skepticism was challenged by the discovery of large, unusual bear tracks, recognizing them as those of a black bear, an uncommon and formidable presence in their woods. Jacob began to consider that there might be some truth to Peter's assertions. This possibility was underscored when they found themselves following a trail that suddenly ended. As if the bear had vanished into thin air, 
The tension escalated when a nearby roar halted them in their tracks, signaling that they might have intruded into the bear's territory. With heightened caution, Peter led the way towards the sound, each step driven by a mix of fear and an unyielding commitment to uncover the truth, hoping against all odds to find the child and bring him to safety, thus perhaps finding some redemption for his own irreplaceable loss. In the threatening shadow of the forest, Jacob was gripped by fear and hesitated to move closer to the ominous growling of the bear. Despite Jacob's reluctance, Peter was determined to confront the danger head on, convinced that they could not simply retreat with a child's life in peril. He convinced Jacob that staying together would increase their safety. With some reluctance, Jacob agreed, and together they edged closer to the unsettling sounds. As they approached the origin of the noise, they discovered a cave marked by the distinct imprints of bear tracks leading into its dark recesses. Peter cautiously moved forward but halted in his tracks when he caught sight of the bear. His resolve momentarily wavered as fear took over. Despite the intense situation, Peter knew they couldn't leave knowing a child was potentially at risk inside the cave. The tension escalated when they heard a child crying from inside the cave. And the bear, reacting to the noise, retreated back into the cave. Shortly after, the bear re-emerged, and the crying stopped, confirming their worst fears, the child was indeed inside. When the bear looked towards Jacob, Peter whispered to him to stay motionless. However, fear overcame Peter, and he began to back away, inadvertently prompting the bear to charge. Jacob, left with no other option, fled and managed to climb a tree, narrowly escaping the bear's reach. From his vantage point, Peter saw a momentary chance to rescue the child, believing Jacob was out of immediate danger. He made a dash for the cave. Inside, darkness enveloped him, and he quickly used his phone's flashlight to navigate. Unsure of the right path, he was guided by a noise deeper within and was relieved to find a young boy seemingly unharmed. They needed to exit quickly as the bear was making its way back into the cave. In a desperate bid to remain unnoticed, Peter turned off the flashlight when the child began to cry, risking their discovery. In a swift response, Peter turned the light back on and prepared to confront the bear. Clutching the child close, at that critical moment, another sound reverberated through the cave, this time, it was different. The bear began to show signs of drowsiness. It had been tranquilized. It turned out that Jacob, acting wisely during the chaos, had managed to contact local wildlife officials who responded just in time to sedate the bear, ensuring their safety and allowing for a tense but ultimately safe rescue. Before venturing into the forest, the rangers took the necessary precautions, a decision that later proved to be wise. However, their challenge was far from over as they were still unsure about the whereabouts of the child's parents. The rangers made the decision to transport the boy to the nearest medical facility and promptly notify the authorities. At the hospital, while the medical team conducted various tests to assess the boy's health and try to determine his identity, Peter stayed by his side, offering comfort. After thorough examinations, the doctors confirmed that the boy was in good health. Meanwhile, Peter received updates that the bear, which had been encountered in the forest, was safely left in its natural habitat, unharmed. During this tense time, a police officer approached Peter with critical information. It was revealed that the bear had been safeguarding the child after his parents tragically lost their lives in a car accident near the forest. It seemed that the bear had found the child and taken him under its care. While grappling with these revelations, Peter's wife hurried to the hospital to support her husband as they awaited further developments. Upon hearing the full story, the couple felt a deep connection to the boy. Moved by the extraordinary circumstances that had brought them together and the bond they felt had formed during this ordeal, they decided to adopt the boy, believing it was fate that had guided Peter to him that day. In time, they successfully went through the adoption process, and Peter also managed to regain his job. This story serves as a poignant reminder that standing up for what is right, even in the face of skepticism, can lead to remarkable and heartwarming results. After listening to this tale, what are your impressions? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Your insights are valuable to us. Now, we have another engaging story. 
Let's proceed to the next one. A young boy's life was plunged into turmoil when his malicious father forcefully ejected him from their car onto a desolate, wooded road, injured and alone. The boy soon faced another, seemingly insurmountable hurdle as a massive, hungry bear emerged from the dense forest. However, the bear's actions that followed were utterly unexpected. Max's heart pounded with fear as his inebriated father sped recklessly down the secluded forest road, overwhelmed with blind rage. The man had unleashed his fury on seven-year-old Max previously, but this time the situation seemed even more dire and uncontrollable. The old car swerved around bends at dangerous speeds, defying the laws of physics. Max was thrown roughly from side to side, each collision with the car's interior sending jolts of pain throughout his small body. Despite his desperate pleas for his father to stop, his cries only fueled his father's fury, with a roar of drunken anger. His father slapped Max across the face, ordered him to be silent, and continued to assault him with a barrage of cruel insults and physical blows as the boy sobbed in agony. At the peak of the father's rage, he suddenly opened the car door and shoved Max's small frame onto the unforgiving road. Max hit the ground face first, the impact knocking the breath out of him as tears mixed with the blood on his bruised face, through blurred vision. He watched in horror as the car's taillights disappeared, leaving him injured and utterly alone on the deserted road, shivering and dazed. Max struggled to his feet, pain shooting through his body, as fear and despair overwhelmed him with the realization that his father had abandoned him to die in these ominous woods. Darkness enveloped the area and the unsettling sounds of the forest crept around the terrified boy, the snapping of branches, hooting owls, and distant howling of wolves filled the air, frozen in place. Max heard rustling in the bushes next to the road, his heart raced as he squinted into the darkness, half expecting a vicious wolf or mountain lion to pounce and finish what his father's cruel betrayal had started. Resigned to face whatever came, Max steeled himself, but he could never have anticipated the incredible sight that stepped out from the shadows. A massive brown bear, standing at eight feet tall and weighing over 1,000 pounds, emerged into the moonlight. Max gasped, frozen in terror as the enormous creature approached. He had expected the bear to be a deadly adversary, yet what transpired next would defy all his expectations. As Max approached, his heart pounded with fear, expecting a threat from the towering creature before him. However, as the distance closed, he was taken aback by a gentle, caring look in the bear's deep set eyes. Standing mere feet from one of the largest land predators in the region, Max felt an inexplicable wave of calm wash over him, coupled with a strong intuition that perhaps this bear meant no harm. The enormous animal gracefully lowered itself to the ground and gently touched Max's legs with its massive paw, emitting a soft, rumbling snort. At that moment, Max realized the bear was not threatening but rather signaling him to climb onto its back. While tales of wild animals forming bonds with humans were not unheard of, the reality of the situation was almost beyond belief for Max. Drained from his ordeal and lacking any viable alternatives for escape, he cautiously mounted the bear, gripping its coarse fur tightly in his trembling hands. Max held his breath, half expecting to be torn apart, contrary to his fears. The bear stood up on all fours and began to walk away from the road. Moving into the dense forest with a gentle rocking motion that seemed almost nurturing, Max struggled to make sense of this surreal twist of fate. Moments ago, he was alone and facing an uncertain fate, and now, he was being carried to safety by this unlikely guardian whose actions defied every known behavior of a wild bear, perched atop the bear's broad back. Max's tense muscles began to relax despite his soreness and the pain he felt, the rhythmic pace of the bear's stride rocked him gently lulling him into a strange peace as they passed beneath towering pines and beside meandering streams, his cheek rested against the bear's thick, warm fur, providing an unexpected comfort. This formidable predator, fully capable of destruction, was instead displaying remarkable gentleness and seemed entirely indifferent to the vulnerable child it was transporting. Despite the oddity and inexplicability of the situation, the bear had become Max's guardian and protector in that dire moment. Completely exhausted from his harrowing ordeal, Max could no longer fight off fatigue, his eyelids grew heavy, and he began to drift in and out of consciousness until eventually, he slid from the bear's back and collapsed onto the ground in a heap, unsure how long he had been unconscious, Max awoke to the sensation of the bear's wet nose nudging and sniffing at his face, as he opened his eyes, he found the bear's enormous muzzle just inches from his own, yet, instead of an attack. 
the bear continued to display a demeanor of protection and curiosity, further deepening the mystery and the bond that had formed in such an extraordinary encounter, as Max stood in a small clearing surrounded by towering evergreens, he felt a sudden, cool breeze brush against his dirt-streaked face, a refreshing change from the stifling air he had been enduring. The oppressive odor that had clung to him was now replaced by the crisp, invigorating scent of pine, it was here. In this secluded spot, that the weight of his recent, tumultuous experiences finally bore down on him, for the first time since he had been tragically left behind, a surge of emotions overwhelmed him, and he began to sob uncontrollably, Max's tears were not just for his immediate predicament, but also for the heart-wrenching realization that his father had attempted to take his own life. This was compounded by an acute longing for his deceased mother, who had always been his source of comfort and reassurance. She was the one who had soothed his scraped knees and calmed his night terrors with her gentle touch and soothing words, assuring him that everything would be all right. Now, amidst his grief and isolation, Max yearned desperately for that same solace. In this moment of profound sorrow, a bear appeared and, with a concerned and delicate manner, sniffed around Max as if to ensure his safety. Initially startled, Max soon understood that the bear meant no harm and seemed determined to watch over him. As his shock and confusion subsided, Max surveyed the unexpected yet strangely comforting presence of this enormous creature. The bear, sensing Max's deep sadness and his craving for maternal comfort, laid its large head on the boy's shoulder, exhaling a long, rumbling snort that echoed the comforting sounds of a morning sigh. Its shaggy fur brushed gently against Max's tear-streaked cheeks. Offering a simple yet profound gesture of comfort, instinctively, Max grasped the bear's coarse, warm fur, and as he did so, his sobs began to subside. The enormity of his situation hit Max with overwhelming force, the surreal and seemingly impossible reality that he had been found and was being protected and comforted by a bear, one of North America's largest predators, a true monarch of the unforgiving wilderness, yet. This formidable predator had inexplicably set aside its natural instincts to become Max's gentle guardian, pondering how the bear had recognized his plight and chosen nurture over nature. Max felt a profound, almost spiritual connection with the creature. As the night's chill deepened, the bear slowly lowered its bulk beside the shivering boy, wrapping its limbs around him in a clear gesture of warmth and shelter. Max snuggled against the dense fur, enveloped by the creature's earthy musk. In this extraordinary moment of kinship with the wild, all of Max's fears and doubts dissolved, replaced by an inexplicable sense of security and belonging, this was a poignant testament to the mysterious, unspoken bond between human and nature, a bond that had, in his darkest hour, brought Max not just survival, but a profound sense of being cherished and safeguarded, despite the trauma he had endured and the inherent predator-prey dynamics of the wild. An innate sense of primordial trust emerged deep within Max's soul, reassuring him that he was safe within the protective embrace of the bear. As he nestled against the animal, Max experienced a profound sense of comfort that transcended mere physical reassurance. For the first time since his harrowing ordeal began, he felt genuinely loved and cared for by a force greater than himself. As he succumbed to the gentle caress of oblivion, Max allowed himself to be enveloped by this nurturing warmth finding a peaceful respite that soothed his weary soul. With the first delicate rays of dawn filtering through the dense forest canopy, the bear awakened Max with a gentle nudge of its enormous paw. Blinking his eyes open, Max squinted against the morning light, struggling to grasp the incredible events of the previous night. He had been rescued from almost certain death by this remarkable creature after his father had heartlessly left him in the merciless wilderness. The bear emitted a deep, rumbling huff from its powerful chest as if to communicate its awareness of the whirlwind of fear, disbelief, and turmoil swirling inside the young boy, by lowering its massive frame to the ground and tilting its large, furry head while angling its broad back towards Max. The bear extended a clear invitation for him to climb aboard once more, though cautious, Max understood that the bear harbored no ill intentions, had the animal wanted to harm him, it could have easily abandoned him to perish, instead, it had courageously saved and protected him against all odds, summoning the remnants of his bravery. Max cautiously climbed onto the bear's back, gripping its thick, warm fur for support. Once securely positioned, the bear rose to its full, impressive height of over eight feet, standing tall on its powerful hind legs. As it began to move, the bear turned its head from side to side, its nostrils flaring as it detected a scent in the distance, 
a low growl rumbled from its throat as it quickened its pace. Each step the bear took was heavy yet surprisingly gentle, as if it instinctively knew to be careful with its vulnerable human rider, ensuring not to jostle Max too much. The boy could feel the rippling muscles along the animal's back and shoulders moving with each powerful stride, clinging on for dear life, his small battered body finding an unexpected sanctuary in this unlikely guardian. As Max's body rose and fell in sync with the bear's steady gait, he was captivated by the creature's immense size and raw power, unsure of where they were heading. Max understood that his survival in these treacherous conditions hinged entirely on the bear, the previous night. The bear had saved him from what seemed like an inevitable demise. Now, it acted as his guardian, navigating him safely away from the numerous perils of the wilderness. Remarkably, the bear had set aside its natural instincts as a dominant predator to assume the role of protector, guiding the vulnerable boy deeper into the thick, rugged forest terrain. During their journey, Max frequently marveled at the bear's muscular physique. Observing the powerful muscles that rippled along its back and shoulders, Despite the bear's intimidating presence, Max felt a profound sense of security rather than fear, an extraordinary bond was forming between the boy, so exposed and defenseless, and the bear, typically a solitary and territorial creature, after what seemed like hours of navigating challenging, uneven ground and dense underbrush, the bear's pace transformed into a cautious, stealthy prowl, it raised its large snout. Sniffing the air for any trace of a scent, sensing something intriguing, the bear's behavior shifted, Max looked ahead, squinting through a gap in the trees, and spotted a man and a woman in a small, sunlit clearing, they appeared to be setting up for a picnic, likely hikers or locals enjoying the pleasant early summer day. Seeing other humans for the first time since the traumatic incident with his father filled Max with a rush of mixed emotions, the couple, Mark and Hannah, Reacted with alarm as the imposing figure of the bear emerged into the clearing, Mark bravely stepped in front of Hannah, ready to defend her with bear spray or perhaps a firearm he clutched in anticipation of a threat. Max attempted to shout, wanting to convey that the bear was not a threat but a protector, however, his voice failed him, resulting in only a feeble cough. Amidst this tense standoff, the bear exhibited an understanding of the couple's fear. It ceased advancing and respectfully lowered its massive body to the ground a deliberate gesture of peace, signaling that it posed no danger, with a gentle demeanor, the bear's actions spoke volumes, bridging the gap between wild nature and human misunderstanding, and showcasing the profound and unexpected connections that can arise even in the most unlikely of circumstances, pushing forward with its broad muzzle, the bear gently nudged Max from its back, delicately placing the injured boy on the ground at the feet of Hannah and Mark, a couple who looked on in stunned disbelief. As Max gazed up at them, his expression was one of desperate pleading, one eye was swollen shut, the other wide and trying to convey his urge and need for help, in a voice barely audible, strained and hoarse, he whispered, please, help me. The sight of the dirt-covered, battered child overwhelmed Hannah with empathy, tears welled up in her eyes as she rushed to his side, she cradled Max's head in her lap, offering comfort as naturally as if he were her own child, gently stroking his tangled hair to calm him. Meanwhile, Mark, his hands trembling with urgency and shock, quickly pulled out his mobile phone and dialed for a medevac. He spoke with a voice thick with emotion, explaining to the emergency operator that they had stumbled upon a severely injured boy who had been astonishingly delivered to them by a massive bear, which had since departed. Shortly afterward, a helicopter touched down in a nearby clearing. The medics, equally shocked, hurried to stabilize Max, who was in critical condition. Before airlifting him to the nearest hospital, as they worked, the great bear, having completed its unexpected mission of mercy, stepped back. It looked at Max for a long moment, its deep brown eyes seemingly filled with affection and a protective sentiment. With a final, rumbling snort from its wet muzzle, the bear turned and ambled slowly back into the dimly lit forest from whence it came, leaving the scene as mysteriously as it had entered, back in the hospital, as Max awoke disoriented. The traumatic memories of his past slowly resurfaced, he remembered the terrifying violence at home, the horrific feeling of his body hitting the road, and the taillights of his father's car disappearing into the dark forest as he was heartlessly abandoned, yet, amid these painful recollections, what stood out most vividly in Max's mind was the extraordinary, almost miraculous encounter with the bear. This enormous creature had not only provided him shelter but had also shown him profound compassion during his most vulnerable moments, 
Max was astounded by the bear's gentle care, which seemed to defy its wild nature, carrying him through the wilderness to safety, directly into the caring arms of Hannah and Mark. This incredible tale of survival, marked by the unlikely protection of a bear, would linger in Max's mind. Forever shaping his understanding of both human cruelty and the unexpected kindness of nature, in a remarkable event that caught the attention of the international media, a wild bear became the unforeseen hero in the rescue of a young boy named Max, as he recovered in the hospital from a series of injuries, including broken bones, cuts, bruises, severe dehydration, and malnutrition, major television networks gathered. Eager to learn about his harrowing experience in the forest and the extraordinary tale of the bear that came to his aid, however, the hospital staff and Max's doctors, aware of the deep emotional and physical trauma he had suffered, initially barred the media from conducting interviews, the medical team's priority was Max's well-being, as he also displayed signs of prolonged mistreatment and neglect which compounded his fragile mental state during this sensitive period. Max was gently questioned by the doctors and police officers about his past experiences, and he revealed the distressing story of his ordeal. Amidst this tumultuous time, his foster parents, Hannah and Mark, reaffirmed their dedication to support Max throughout his recovery. This commitment was tested when Max's biological father made a dramatic and unwelcome appearance at the hospital, aggressively demanding to take his son despite the history of abuse. The situation escalated quickly with security intervening and the police detaining the father, all witnessed by Max, Hannah was quick to comfort Max, reassuring him that he was safe from further harm. The emotional roller coaster continued for Max, who faced the grim reality of potentially re-entering the overwhelmed foster care system, an ongoing source of distress for him. However, in a twist resembling a storybook ending, Mark and Hannah expressed their intentions to legally adopt Max. The couple shared their struggles with infertility, including unsuccessful treatments and miscarriages, explaining that meeting Max felt like a serendipitous chance to fulfill their dreams of parenthood and provide a loving, stable home. Max, who had been wary of trusting others due to his traumatic past, surprisingly formed an immediate and deep bond with Mark and Hannah. This connection was something the hospital staff had never seen before, and it seemed that a distant nurturing memory. Perhaps inspired by the bear that saved him, allowed Max to recognize and accept the genuine love and care offered by the couple. Over the following months, Max gradually found the loving and secure home he had been cruelly denied previously, thriving under the care of his new family. After escaping his father's oppressive rule, Max found solace in the loving arms of Mark and Hannah. This couple went above and beyond to provide for him, ensuring he had access to the best medical care therapeutic support, and other essential resources, these efforts were crucial for his physical and mental recovery, most importantly, they showered him with unconditional love, a vital component in his journey to heal from the neglect he had endured, despite the occasional resurgence of traumatic memories, one constant in Max's life remained his guiding light. The vivid memories of a formidable yet nurturing bear that had miraculously saved his life on two separate occasions through acts of incredible bravery, this bear's steadfast presence during his darkest times cultivated in Max a lifelong appreciation for the beauty, compassion, and redemption that the natural world can unexpectedly provide. What could have driven the bear to exhibit such tender care towards Max? Was it a rare display of maternal instinct? Or did the creature sense something uniquely special about the boy? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. That's all for today's story. Please subscribe and give a thumbs up. See you next time. Thank you.